welcome to another installment of Migo Museum's Vintage Migo. It's a special episode, one I have been wanting to do for some time, but never imagined I'd have the opportunity to do so. Presenting the Denny Fisher Power Action Superman toy. This is a 12-inch figure that was only released in the United Kingdom, and honestly, it's just not all that well known. Uh, even when I posted I had purchased this, about a third of the comments were statements like, I didn't even know they made this, which isn't all that surprising because it is a hard-to-find item that we rarely talk about. So where does this elaborate toy come from? Well, it couldn't have a better parent. It was originally designed in Mego's New York office by director of design John McNett. McNett was the brains behind winning Mego toy concepts like the Star Trek Transporter and the Tricorder. Originally, McNett envisioned a 12-inch hollow die-cast figure, manufacturing the torso in separate halves. It would have had to have been at least 12 inches tall to work properly. The arms were operated by a screw thread so kids could rotate them forward, upward, or backward. McNett also planned a similar mechanism for the waist, which would have meant very limited articulation for the figure. The project got pretty far at Mego, and McNett believed that the smaller die-cast superhero figures that did get made from this period were somehow derived from the Power Action project. The project stopped for one main reason. The metal made it too heavy, and then there were safety concerns about hurting children with this big, heavy toy. However, unbeknownst to John McNett, the foreign sales arms of Mego actually pitched the figure and got it made in the United Kingdom. When told of this years later, McNett actually said a lot of rejected U.S. ideas were sold to foreign markets merely to recruit production costs. The final figure was not made of die-cast metal, but of plastic. According to John McNett, he believed this defeated the purpose of the figure. Mego somehow got a hold of the tooling used to make the Mattel Pulsar action figure in 1977 and heavily modified it. But as you can see by putting them together, they are clearly related. As a result... Power Action Superman towers over all the other 12-inch offerings by Mego. The regular 12-inch Superman Christopher Reeve head was used. Even when they were playing the die-cast figure, it's important to note they were going to have a vinyl head and cloth costume with it. It does give the figure a slightly pinheaded look when compared to that incredibly beefy body of the new Power Action Superman. The power action feature is slightly more understated than it was originally intended by John McNett, uh, with Superman either breaking out of a chain and padlock, simulating that classic Neil Adams cover, or bending a girder. Everything, uh, by the way, is cast in lovely, bright orange plastic. Mego never had any plans for extra characters or growing this line. This was a one-and-done figure specifically made for Superman. Originally marketed as Super Strength Superman in the 1979 Denny Fisher catalog, the Christopher Reeve movies likely influenced the decision to get this made at the time. Also, Denny Fisher was carrying Six Million Dollar Man and the 12-inch Star Wars line, so he was in great 1-6 company that year. It is not known how well it sold or how long it was offered for. Hopefully someday we get that kind of feedback and information. On the secondary market, these do pop up loose, incomplete, but almost never boxed or with those uh, chains or girder. I've tried for decades to find one, but there's also the problem of price. Uh, on the ones I have seen in the box, I always got outbid. I had honestly at this point in my life just given up on trying to find one. Thanks to two very cool people, I managed to track down this one, which is near complete. That is, That girder I have is actually from Steve Austin, but hey, it's an orange girder. I'll live with it. As somebody who is reflecting more on his collection than adding to it these days... I don't know how many more Mego Grails I'll be adding to the home version of my Mego Museum. 
So this was a pretty great capper when all things are said and done. I'm really proud of this piece and just love it. Had you heard of this piece before? Is it on your want list? Let me know in the comments below. Or you can hit me up at Twitter, at Mega Museum. We have a growing Facebook group called Mego Mania. We'd love to have you in. And of course, you can always drop by the MegoMuseum.com forums. Thanks as always for watching. Really grateful. If you're new to this, please consider hitting like and subscribe. We do Mego stuff every week. Until next time, have fun.